Hey guys, Don by 601 and today is the last day of the year. So I thought I would go over the best ships, the best new ships of the year, whether that be premium campaign reward ship or even tech tree, and just kind of give my thoughts on the 10 best ships of the year. Also, uh, let's go ahead and uh, throw up a code. Wargaming had a weird kind of blog post yesterday, but in that blog post, they did have a code for a Secret Santa 22 container. That code's going to be NZ5DHJ4W65. You go over to wowus.com slash code redeemer to get it. Once again, that code is NZD5DHJ4W65. So with all that said, Let's dive into the first ship, number 10, the Siegfried. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, Tommy, really, the Siegfried, one of the best ships. Yes, I have a soft spot for this ship. And it's not just because it's the first ship I got early because it was my first uh, It was my first ship as being a community contributor. I genuinely enjoy Siegfried because it is a fun time anytime you get to take Siegfried out. I love the kind of hybrid cruiser battleship playstyle that Siegfried offers, and it does play unlike any other ship at the tier, and it does bring me some absolute joy, even if the German dispersion does bring me some uh, anger uh, during sometimes while I play it. But yeah, Siegfried is my number 10 pick. Next, at number nine, the first tech tree ship, North Carolina. I have to say, I think North Carolina one is the highlight of the new line of the new battleships. Uh, I mean, Kansas recently got its buff. I have yet to take a look at Kansas with its buff, but North Carolina, it fe it makes the U.S. battleship lines feel complete. It's a tier six battleship that doesn't. I I'm sorry. I hated grinding through Colorado, and North Carolina felt just right, and I it was a joy for me to grind through North Carolina. Yes, the turret, the dispersion can be a bit wonky on that ship. I think that's its balancing factor considering it has 16 inch guns at tier five. And of course it has the usual 25 millimeter bow at tier six. Sorry, both of those words, tier six. Uh, you know, it has 16 inch guns at tier six and a 25 minute millimeter bow, which you would kind of expect on battleships at, at tier six. I, I just found it a joy. And I think it's one of the highlights of the line. Number eight is another American battleship, and that's the Massachusetts. Uh, kind of, kind of, oh, not quite. Maybe making the criteria for uh, a ship that came out this year, but I earned it this year, so we're calling it that it came out this year. Massachusetts, offering a different playstyle for the American battleships, has decent guns, but more importantly, the secondary range on it is just fantastic. I have Haruna and uh, Von. Uh, Von Hippa on there and uh, let me tell you those guns reach out to nearly 10 kilometers or I think they're a little bit past 10 kilometers now but they reach well out past they it has the longest range and fairly accurate secondaries for uh, for an American battleship and it is fun just having that different kind of hybrid play style it's unlike the Bismarck where I feel like when you play the Bismarck you almost have to rely on secondary batteries to do things for you this with it with Massachusetts it definitely feels like it's an addition. It feels like it's a bonus damage you get whenever you're within 10 kilometers of your enemies. And that is why I've really, really come to enjoy Massachusetts uh, this year, just because it, 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 is a, it is a really good all around battleship. From battleships on to destroyer, the first destroyer in our ship that comes in at number seven is Friesland. One of the, uh, one of, I'm gonna call them the twins that came out this year. Uh, Friesland and Loyang. Of the two, I know in my heart of hearts, Loyang is a more competitive ship, but Friesland offers that Daka Daka play style. What other ship can just punish cruisers close, close up when they're showing broadside? What other destroyer can punish just other destroyers and make other destroyers fear them? Because that's what Friesland does. It punishes other ships that are within gun range. Now, to do it, it loses... It's, uh, it loses its torpedoes, which are arguably some of Destroyer's most valuable assets, but I absolutely love Friesland for its unique playstyle and its ability just to chunk down enemy sh any enemy ship that decides to be spotted within your your range that you can go ahead and smoke screen. Super long smoke screen, 
pretty good sonar. Uh, you're, you're able to very effectively counter enemy destroyers, assuming you stay out of that, that broad knife fight range where they can, like, torp you. You are the king of gunboats in that thing, and if there's one thing I absolutely love, it's gunboats. Now, I, I say that, but our next pick at number six, Paolo Emilio. Uh, I think favorite, easily my favorite global XP ship this year. It, it was to the point where, uh, thankfully, due to, I forget what event they had going on, I think it was, was it April Fool's? There was there was an event going on where you could manage to get a ton of global XP uh, and basically guarantee yourself to be able to earn a global XP ship. And my priorities went from things like Alabama and whatnot straight to Paolo when I got to play her because Paolo, you'll, you'll notice this in a lot of these picks, is a unique ship. It offers a great different play style than any other ship in the game. Um, the, the YOLO lifestyle, the YOLO play style, there's nothing more fun than being able to to use your twist and track to identify where some ships are, have a 45, 48 second smoke screen, drop your torps on either side, sink two battleships, and continue on your day. It is a great feeling, and uh, when it works, it is just one of the best feelings in the game. Coming in at number five, probably going to be a little bit of a contentious pick here, HMS Furious. Yeah, uh, I think I would be remiss if I didn't put an aircraft carrier on this list just because they did, no matter your opinion, absolutely change the game this year. I think we can absolutely say they changed the game. And the one that has be quickly become my favorite is Furious. I have absolutely loved Furious. I've absolutely really enjoyed the British ship play style of, of the aircraft carriers, the being able to have the carpet bombs, the inward coming torpedoes. Uh, puts a definitely a different spin on accuracy and a different uh, skill set out there. And it's one that I've come to really enjoy. The other thing I really enjoy is that you can absolutely go out and uh, hunt down and you can you can go ahead and really uh, at least have a chance against destroyers in, in, in Furious and the British ships. And that is one thing that I felt was definitely lacking of, oh, if a destroyer, if, a, if you spot a destroyer, you have to rely on your teammates in most of the other of in most of the other um aircraft carriers because fat chance you're going to do enough damage with dive bombers if you're running the germans to to be able and good luck it's it's much more of up to chance in the american dive bombers or japanese dive bombers and then torpedoes well if they're competent they can usually easily dodge your torpedo so uh i think furious has become my favorite in i think my most effective of these ships which is why i'm putting her at number five at four we have one of the newest tech tree ships in the game gajamata um the new pan asian destroyer line fantastic i am loving the new destroyer line uh they've definitely added some big changes right they've they've shifted the meta and i've come to really really enjoy these ships i enjoy that they are essentially a best of hits of the rest of the lines of ships because they kind of just get hand-me-down ships and we get to play in a different style and ships that we know and love. I love the hybrid American British smoke that these things have on. They have a super long dispersion time, a not too long recharge time. You get a ton of charges of them. The smokes for if you want a gunboat are there. And then you have the torps. And yes, you give up being able to hit other destroyers with the torps. But that isn't the, the key thing. The key thing is they're super stealthy and they're absolutely killer. I, I Yeah, the, the, new, the new destroyers have quickly become my favorite. They are a little bit higher of a skill ceiling to, to implement and to play. But when you are in tune with them, they are an absolute blast. And uh, they've quickly uh, become my go-to to grind and my, my go-tos to just when I want to take out certain ships. Next is going to be the last destroyer and number three on the list, the Z-35. I think this was the best destroyer that came out this year. Definitely the best all-arounder. Uh, it, it is a solid tier six performer, excellent long-range hydro, excellent smoke, decent torpedo reload time, massive guns for a, uh, for a destroyer, decent reload time. You get the German quarter H HE pen. 
All of those things make a fantastic all-rounder. Won't let you down. My It was my go-to on the, like, I would just play it and get random Krakens in it. I wouldn't try to get Krakens. It just kind of happened out of nowhere because it just uh, lends itself to being a very effective vessel with lots of tricks up its sleeve that it can employ and uh, with its utility put you in the right place at the right time. And yeah, Z Z35, easily my favorite destroyer to come out this year. Number two is going to have to go to Achikov. Um, Achikov, let's put it this way. When you see an, when when I see an Achikov on the enemy team, I roll my eyes and I'm not looking forward to that engagement because I know if this player has a modicum of skill, it is going to be a pain in the rear to get rid of them because if they know what they're doing, they're going to be kiting all over the place. That tiny citadel won't get hit. You'll get barely little damage. You'll get uh, things that you feel like should be over pens, but really just get ricocheted like Achikov is a pain in the neck to play against. Um, and as a result, it is a ship that you can take, you can go play like an idiot the first five minutes of a match, get down to barely any health, then play strategically for the rest of the game and be the be a thorn in the sides of your enemies and do incredibly well. And for that, I give it the number two slot of the best new ship this year because it is a powerhouse, uh, especially when played correctly. It has sonar, it has radar. It 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 is a very much a complete package of a ship. So that's number two. What is number one? I think you can probably figure it out. It's Weimar. Man, Weimar changed everything. Uh, Weimar, Weimar is an absolutely insane ship. Uh, it is it is my go-to moneymaker. It is my go-to Kraken printer. It is my go-to ship for when I just want to feel good about my life because Weimar will absolutely ruin people's days if you know how to play it correctly. Uh, the guns are gross. They are disgusting. The ship is maneuverable enough to keep yourself out of trouble. The torpedoes are great. The sonar range is excellent. It is the full package of a ship. And in in my in my sense, I think it is the most powerful ship released this year. It is just an absolute knockout of a ship. And that's why I'm giving it my 2021 Ship of the Year award. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, guys, those are my 10 favorite ships this year. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I hope you have a great New Year's, um, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See ya.